Hey there everybody, it's Mike Delisio with another Dice Tower Daily Unboxing. Today we have something that I am very, very excited about. This is Cleopatra and the Society of Architects. This is the premium edition from Mojito Games. Two to four players in about an hour. Now, the original Cleopatra and the Society of Architects was released by Days of Wonder. And at the time, and actually in the years succeeding, it was already considered to be one of the most impressive games component-wise. You used the box as a part of the actual game board. It had 3D plastic components. It is still to this day one of the most stunningly gorgeous games on the table, and it's one of my favorite games of all time. And so when I heard that there was going to be a updated, kind of redone, even more premium edition of the game with some slight rules changes and making it viable as a two-player game, apparently, uh, I was pretty excited. And so here we have it. Let's take a look and uh, see. It is a massive box, as you can probably get a sense from the camera here. It is definitely a large box. And it looks like we've got a sleeve, first of all. So let me remove this sleeve. And that reveals to us a royal blue, I would call it, box with gold foil. All right, so the back of the sleeve here, piece by piece you will build a real 3D palace on your table. An entire 3D palace complete with a base, a top, a floor, four pillars. So. Very similar to the original Days of Wonder edition, it looks like we're going to be building a 3D palace. However, the box was the kind of base for the original game. We had cardboard pyramids. Looks like maybe we've got plastic pyramids here. So we'll kind of take a look at the differences that we have in store here. All right. So you might expect a pretty substantial box because it needs to hold all this weight, a lovely signed card there looks like perhaps some player aids here we'll try to find here we go we've got some player aids show which cards are needed to build which portions of the palace. All right, so this is the premium edition, as I mentioned before, and the rule book's going to be referring to the retail edition. And um, it says there's just a few changes. Obviously, the pyramids are premium, amulets of corruption, the mosaics, the treasures, and the top of the palace. It says before your first game, insert the palace garden on top of the palace. You don't need to pull it out every time. And it shows you how to place an amulet of corruption in your pyramid. All right. And that's one of the main mechanics to the game is that you can take more powerful actions that have corruption attached and you place them into your pyramid. And then at the end of the game, whichever player has the most corruption is ineligible to win. They get fed to the, I think it's a crocodile, uh, one of the Egyptian uh, deities. All right. Take a look at the rule book here. We've got our table of contents, the setup, overview, and a game turn. So you can either do one of these two actions. You can visit the market, which is picking up cards. And if it's like the first game, I assume it would be, it has a really interesting mechanic where you've got markets of cards and some of the cards are face up and some of them are face down. So you don't know exactly what you're gonna get, which is, uh, I just think, a great mechanic. Or you can, instead of visiting the market, you can visit the quarry, which is actually spending cards to build a piece of the palace, okay? And in addition to your mandatory action, you can activate one of the worshiper, worshipers of Sobek. And I believe this is something that is new. I believe, uh, I don't, uh, yeah, I don't remember this being a part of the game, although I thought that there were cards that gave you different actions. So maybe it's just a little bit of a change 
uh, kind of in how that is, is handled. You've got those tainted cards, which are kind of the corruption. Offerings to the Great Priest, which was in the original game. And then the end of the game, it goes into detail on how you do that. And so when you go to the quarry, these are all the different parts that you can build. You can build six sphinxes, and it says the cost is an artisan and two equal resources. And that's a little bit different than in the original game, but the similar idea is just they're simplifying it a little bit. To do the door frames, which are there are only two of them, two artisans and three equal resources, and then you get a reward for that as well. And then you've got the obelisks. There are two of those, three artisans and four equal resources. And as the, the ones that are more difficult, obviously, are going to give you larger rewards, and there are fewer of them. Uh, the column walls, an artisan and two different resources. And then the mosaics, which is polyominoes before polyominoes were really a big thing, is, uh, you know, you're kind of placing polyominoes in a, uh, in a way to try to kind of create areas that you can hopefully put your little uh, people on there if you build a sanctuary, okay? All right, and then the pedestal and the throne, there's just one of each of those. All right, well, let's look at these probably quite impressive pieces. The, the, the component quality does look pretty stunning, as to be expected. There we go. Struggling to find the opening of this. All right. So, lots of double uh, layer, dual layered cardboard, thick cardboard components. Cards can go in there. Okay. This is also dual layered. Very thick, and you can see it's going to be like kind of setting into something else. This is where Cleopatra is going to begin her journey. This is the dual layered side. Apparently there's two sides. One side where it's dual layered, one side where it is not. Uh, if I have an option, I'm always going to be choosing the dual layered side. These are plastic. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's sturdy plastic too. Here we've got some painted miniatures and wow that's really impressive i'm just going to hold these up here i'm not going to necessarily take them out i think you can get a pretty good idea of the quality of those all right i lied i'm going to take one out yeah that's nice it's really pretty impressive looking Here are the pyramids. You can see that. Aha, uh -huh, look at that. You place your corruption right in there. That is really cool. <laughs> it's a neat little touch. They could have just put a slot in there, but they have a kind of one that closes up. Pretty nifty. All right, I want to kind of keep these together. Bases for the minis. A drawstring kind of velvet almost feeling bag. Plastic scarabs with the different values on the back there. Very, very nice. They are not uh, exaggerating when they refer to this as a premium edition. Everything in this appears to be quite, quite premium. We have another, you hear that? You hear that sound? For many of us, that is one of the favorite sounds in board gaming is that promise of metal coins. Of course, opening the drawstring bag can sometimes be a challenge. Aha. Success. Oh, look at these beautiful metal coins. Very, very nice. And there's a lot of them as well. My goodness. Okay, that's a die, all right.
dropped one. Here we go. Let's find him. There he is. Aha. Along with a huge <laughs> wooden die. <laughs> that is remarkably large. Okay. I'm going to keep these off to the side for now. Here's another There's a lot of uh, painted miniatures in this. There we go. There's another one. Let's show off some of the cards here so you can get a sense for the art direction and the iconography and such. Although this one is really, this is just the art of that particular character. Let's look at some of these. Right. That gives you a better idea on some of the iconography, at least, and the art on those. Okay, now we've got these mosaic tiles, which are thick. I'm not sure what the actual material is on these, but they are really, really, maybe like um, acrylic. Beautiful, beautiful mosaic tiles there. Try to put, take these out in order. There's so many pieces here. It's remarkable. Some more tiles. All right, these are some th thick cardboard tiles here. And let's look at some of these pillars, these printed pillars. Wow, that is amazing. Let's look at one of the sphinxes. All kind of a wash on these pieces. I suppose you could paint them, but I almost think they look better just as is. All right. Again, trying to keep things somewhat in the order that they were placed in the box, although this one is taped and that makes it a little bit challenging. There we go. Okay, we've got a huge deck of cards. So let's look at that deck of cards while I've got easy access to them. This is gonna be primarily the market cards. All right. Very, very, I like the artwork. I think it's, I liked the artwork and I still do like the artwork in the original. I don't know whether I would say that this is an upgrade or not as far as the art goes. I think that's gonna be likely just a matter of your taste but it certainly is nice it's not it's not a downgrade i wouldn't say in my opinion there's our lapis but the component quality is remarkable i i, I don't know that i've got a great word for it other than it's just really impressive here's the kind of steps up Trying to do this in such a way that I can kind of get it back <laughs> together. Oh my goodness, okay. So, a hinged, no it's not hinged, okay. Or it is, or it's broken. We may have to glue that. Yeah, I think I may have broken it. It's, it's uh, magnetized there. All right, well that's unfortunate. Yeah, see it's supposed to just be kind of on there. So we'll have to glue that together. Hmm. All right, let's see. This is going to go here. I'm trying to put things back somewhat in the order that they were in. Well, that is a lot. 
<laughs> that is a lot. But this is a pretty impressive project all told. That is Cleopatra and the Society of Architects, the Premium Edition. Thank you for watching another Dice Tower Daily Unboxing.